Welcome to Connection Ministries video Bible series, To Whom Shall We Go? This episode is on the sixth beatitude, Blessed are the pure in heart. My name is Don Bowden, and welcome to Connection Ministries video Bible series, To Whom Shall We Go? In this Bible study, we will learn about the Beatitudes, or blessings, that Jesus taught his disciples and the crowd during the, what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. The study will be presented as individual episodes. As we go through this lesson, there will be some discussion questions. At any time, feel free to pause the video to talk about the questions. If you would like to download and print the discussion questions, you will find the note sheet next to this video on our website. The Beatitudes, which is part of the Sermon on the Mount, is found in Matthew chapter 5. Crowds were gathered around Jesus, and when he saw them, he went to a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. While it might seem at first glance that Jesus was actually teaching the large crowd, he was actually teaching his disciples. The crowd gathered around the mountainside to hear the important lessons he was sharing with his disciples. Jackie Schaefer will now talk about the sixth beatitude and what it means. But before we start the story, let's sing a worship song. pray together. God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to teach us more about you. 
Help us to take lessons from the Beatitudes and apply them to our own lives. Open our hearts and minds to what you would teach us in this Bible lesson. Amen. In this episode, we will study the sixth Beatitude that Jesus taught his disciples. This lesson is found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 8. Jesus was traveling near the Sea of Galilee. There were many people following him. So, Jesus went up on a mountainside and gathered his core disciples around him. The crowd found places around the mountainside to hear what he was going to teach his disciples. Jesus began teaching his disciples what is known as the Beatitudes. The word Beatitude means blessedness. There are eight blessings that Jesus taught during the Sermon on the Mount. This passage teaches us to look at our hearts and the attitudes God wants us to have towards ourselves, our sin, the Lord, and the world. Each statement starts with the word blessed, which means we are filled with a joy and peace that cannot be shaken. This kind of joy and peace comes as we put our trust in God. Trusting God changes our hearts and attitudes, and we find the blessing and future reward that Jesus spoke about. The Beatitudes set the tone for the rest of the Sermon on the Mount. These blessed statements show the goodness of God and that we find our blessing in God alone. So what are the Beatitudes? The Beatitudes are blessed statements that Jesus taught his disciples to show the goodness of God and that we find our blessing in God alone. Now let's talk about the sixth Beatitude and what it means. Jesus said, Blessed are those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. A person's heart becomes pure when that person desires nothing more than to be with God. A person with a pure heart believes that Jesus is their Savior and looks to the Holy Spirit for guidance. Sadly, temptation is everywhere, and sin separates us from God. When sin is in our lives, God seems distant and hard to see. This is true when we are aware of our sins and not willing to ask for forgiveness and turn away from our sin. This is repentance. But when we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and confess our sins, those sins are overcome and we can see God in our life. With a pure, thankful heart, you see God in everything. You see him in the trials, you see him in the blessings, and you see him in the everyday details of your life. What is the sixth beatitude and what does it mean? The sixth beatitude is blessed are those whose hearts are pure, they will see God. It means a person's heart becomes pure when that person desires nothing more than to be with God. A person with a pure heart believes that Jesus is their savior and looks to the Holy Spirit for guidance. When we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and confess our sins, those sins are overcome and we can see God in our life. To keep our hearts pure and focused on God, it's important to be in Christian community. A community of believers loves each other, studies the Bible, prays for each other, and keeps each other accountable. As Christians, it is not good to be alone. When we are alone, it becomes much easier to stray from God and give in to temptations around us. This is why being in a Christian community is so important. A Christian community could be your church, a friendship group, or a small group. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, where two or three people gather in my name, I am there with them. Are you part of a Christian community? If Jesus is with us when we are in community, we can see him better in community. One great example of a Christian community in the Bible is found in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. During Pentecost, Peter stood up in front of a large crowd and shared the good news of Jesus' death, resurrection, and the salvation he offers. Many people turned away from their sins and 3,000 people were baptized that day. These believers became a close Christian community. Here's what it says in the book of Acts. The believers studied what the apostles taught. They shared their lives together. They ate and prayed together. Everyone was amazed at what God was doing. They were amazed when the apostles performed many wonders and signs. All the believers were together. They shared everything they had. They sold property and other things they owned. They gave to anyone who needed something. Every day they met together in the temple courtyard. 
They ate meals together in their homes. Their hearts were glad and sincere. They praised God. They were respected by all the people. Every day the Lord added to their group those who were being saved. The believers shared their lives together. They gave to those who needed something. They studied what the disciples taught and ate and prayed together with glad and sincere hearts. And every day the Lord added to the group those who were being saved. This was because they knew Jesus was with them in community. The early believers remained focused on God, believing that Jesus is Lord and Savior. Confessing your sins is the first step to having a pure heart. However, you must then look to the Holy Spirit for guidance in your life and surround yourself with other believers. With a pure, thankful heart, you see God in everything. You see Him in the trials, in the blessings, and you see Him in the everyday details of life. What did the believers do in the Bible? The believers shared their lives together. They gave to those who needed something. They studied what the disciples taught and ate and prayed together with glad and sincere hearts. And every day the Lord added to their group those who are being saved. Why is it important to be in Christian community? Jesus is with us in Christian community. Matthew chapter 18 verse 20 says, where two or three people gather in my name, I am there with them. The community loves each other, studies the Bible, prays for each other, and keeps each other accountable. As Christians, it is not good to be alone. When we are alone, it becomes much easier to stray from God and give in to temptations around us. A Christian community could be your church, a friendship group, or a small group. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 says, Try your best to live in peace with everyone. Try hard to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. We need to keep our eyes focused on God and look to Him for strength over temptations. When we focus on Jesus and confess our sins, we will see God in our lives. These next questions are a bit more personal. If you are comfortable with the friends you are with, you can answer, but you don't have to. This is a time for you to think about how this Bible lesson relates to your own life. How can you live out the sixth beatitude in your own life? Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you in your life. Look to surround yourself with Christian community like a friendship group. Study God's word, pray daily, go to church and friendship group, be in Christian community, and tell others about Jesus. How can you encourage someone else with the beatitudes? Pray with them and encourage them to read God's Word. Invite them to church or to friendship group. Share how much you love God and the blessings He has given you in your life. Let's close with prayer. God, help me to focus on you and not allow temptations to take me away from you. Surround me with a Christian community so we can pray together, read the Bible, love each other, and hold each other accountable. Give me a glad and sincere heart and help me to share your love with others. Amen. Now join me for a closing worship song. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea Creations revealing your majesty From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing God All powerful, untamable, all struck we fall to our knees Oh.
showed every lightning bolt where it should go Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow Who imagined the sun and give souls to its light Yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night None can fathom indescribable Thank you for joining us for this seventh episode on the Beatitudes. Join us for the next episode where we will look deeper into what Jesus was teaching when he said, blessed are those who make peace. They will be called children of God. If you have any questions or need information, you can email us at connect at connection-ministries.org or call our office 317-646-5067. If you would like to partner with Connection Ministries by providing financial support, you can give online at connectionministries.org.